Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan Persson, also known as Infensia. And if you've been here before, you've heard that a million times. Well, not a million times because I don't have that many videos, but you've heard it a few times. And if you're new, welcome. I'm glad that you decided to come and watch this channel. In last video, I created this uh, low poly character here. And uh, today I'm gonna be doing an armature rig him and uh, make sure that he can move so and that we can animate him. My goal is to make a really quick and easy guide that you can come back to. You can fast forward, go back and forth, throw from the go back and forth, forth, forth to the different sections as you need. And it'll show you how to create the armature bones how to symmetrize it and flip it, how to create inverse kinematics for the legs and the foot movement, and then also to do the automatic weights assignment and also correct any little issues that you might have with incorrect uh, weight painting. Well, I've been speaking long enough now, let's just start the video. First, make sure you don't have anything selected and press Shift A and add armature. And then you go into the object data properties tab and uh, expand viewport display and click in front so you can see the armature through your character. And then I press Shift space and G so I can get the little grab tool and then I move the bone up to the pelvis and then I resize it just by moving on the movement axis. I select the tip and then I hit E to extrude and then right click to snap it back so I can keep moving it up along the z-axis with the blue arrow. I usually have a pelvis, two spine bones, a neck bone and a head bone. And then I select the joint between the spine and the neck and then I hit E to extrude a collarbone and then I hit E to extrude the upper arm, E again to extrude the lower arm and E again to extrude the hand. And then I shift and right click with the mouse to position the cursor by the hip and then I hit shift A and add another armature bone. And then I select the upper leg bone and then I hold shift and click the pelvis and then I press Control P to keep offset and parent it to the pelvis. Select the knee joint, position it a little bit and then hit E to extrude, right click to snap it back and then I move it down, go to side view using three on the numpad and then I hit E to extrude the foot and then I move all the joints into the correct positions. I usually just have one foot bone and I put the tip at the toe by the ground and the heel just above the foot. Move the spine a little bit into place to follow the shape of the body as well as the neck and the head bone so it follows the shape of the character. I usually use the G shortcut on the keyboard to do the movement. Press 1 on the keypad to go into front view and then I position the shoulder bone and the collarbone and I move it down a little bit so the neck is uh, and the collarbone is in the correct place and I adjust the elbow and also the hand joint and the tip of the fingers. Press 7 on the keypad to go to top view and I make sure the adjustments is correct there as well. Pan around using the wheel button on the mouse and then I make sure everything seems to be correctly positioned inside the body. And then I select the pelvis bone and I go to the bones tab and I start renaming them. So the pelvis bone is the first one we're going to rename. And then we select the lower spine, which I usually call just spine. And then to match the ragdoll in unity, I usually call the second spine bone chest. And then neck is called neck. And surprise, surprise, the head, we're going to name head. And then for the side bones, we're going to click on the shoulder bone and name it shoulder.l for left. As you can see, it's his left. And then I select the upper arm and rename that upper arm.l. And then I select the lower arm and rename that lower arm.l. And then finally, the hand and name that hand.l. Then I select the upper bone, rename that to upper leg.l, and the lower leg.l, so l is for left, and then the foot, and I call it foot.l. It's important to keep the .l convention because it'll be automatic to mirror the character later on. Here's a really important step as well, and uh, go to the front view using one on the keypad, and then click A to select all the bones, and do Shift N and align to view axis. If you don't do this, then you're going to have problems later on with mirroring poses when you animate. And now it's time to set up the inverse kinematics. So I press 3 on the keypad to go into side view, and then I select the knee joint and press E to extrude a bone, and then the foot joint, and I press E to extrude a bone. The knee bone I rename to IK leg pole.l, and then I need to select the bone and press Alt P and clear parent. And then I use G to position it above the kneecap, so that's going to be the pole target for the knee. And then while the bone is selected, press Alt P and clear parent for this one as well. And then while the bone is selected, we rename it to IK leg target dot L. And we also have to make sure that these IK bones don't deform the mesh. So I select the bone and I go into the bone tab and I deselect deform. 
And now we're going to set up the rest of the IK. So I select the lower bone, press control tab to go into post mode. And then we go to the bone constraints tab and add bone constraint and select inverse kinematics. And then we need to change the chain length to two and then select the target armature and set the bone to IK leg target L. And then for the pole target, we also select the armature, but here we select the IK leg pole dot L. The foot will be flipped, so change the pole angle to 90 degrees to flip it forward again. Now we're in pretty good shape. So if you select the target IK bone and hit G and then move it around a little bit, the leg should be following pretty good now. There is one problem though, is uh, the foot is actually pointing down towards the ground and we want it to stay flat to the ground when you move it. So we need to fix that. And then to do that, we need to go to add bone constraint and select copy rotation for the foot. And then we select the target, which is going to be the IK leg target bone. It's probably going to be rotated incorrectly. So you need to change the space from world space in both cases to local space. That alone won't really fix it. So we then need to go into the bones tab and expand relations. Make sure it doesn't inherit any rotation. And now the foot should stay in the same rotation as the target bone. But now we've got a different problem and that's the rotation is incorrect. So we go back into the bone constraints tab and then we invert the X axis and now it'll rotate correctly with the target bone. We can also go to the top view or the shift seven to go to the bottom view so you actually see the foot and then make sure that the rotation is correct there as well, which it is. It's time to flip this character. So I'll go out of object post mode, control tab, click A to select everything. And then I press F3 and type symmetrize. This will automatically flip all the bones that have the, the name dot L in them. And then it'll make a duplicate in the exact mirrored exposition and rename them automatically to dot R for the right side. So that's really convenient. That's why we used the dot L conventions earlier. Go out of the object edit mode and select the character, hold the shift key and select the armature and then press control P for armature to form and use with automatic weights. This will automatically map all the character vertices to the bones and it does a pretty good job. So in control tab back into pose mode, we can see it's done a fairly good job. Joint seems to be moving quite good. The spine, the arms, uh, all the vertices and of the character rotate pretty good. The eyes are a bit messed up at this point, but we can fix that in a minute. Then we can also go into side view using three on the keypad, check that the bones are right or the foot. And here we've got a problem with the back it's moving. We don't really want it to do that, so we need to fix this. When you're done testing in post mode, hit Alt G and Alt R on your keyboard to reset it to the default character positions, the T-pose. And now we're going to fix that uh, back issue with a, that was connected to the leg. So I select the armature and I shift click and select the character. And then I go into the object and I switch it to the weight paint at the top left. And now we can hold shift and left click on a bone to select it. And uh, we can see on the color of the character how the vertices are mapped. So if they're blue, they're not mapped at all. And if they're green, yellow or orange or red, they're mapped at different weights where green is the least and red is the most. I go to the top and I change the weight to zero because we want to remove the vertices in the back from the leg. And then I change the mode to mix and then I can start painting away and I can ensure that the back of the character and the hips above the hips is uh, blue again so it doesn't follow the leg motion anymore. I switch to the side view using three on the keypad and I select the target bone and I make sure that the back isn't moving anymore. The character turns out of the blue color because the target IK bone doesn't have any deform on it. Okay, we're done with that. We'll go out of weight, paint into object mode again and make sure everything looks all right. Uh, let's test the character and move the different joints again. We can see that the foot is okay, the back doesn't move anymore. And now we're gonna make sure that the arms are rotating okay as well, which they seem to be. And so does the spine and the chest bones. All seems to be rotate uh, good enough for a low poly character like this. And then finally, we're gonna fix the eyes that were not following the head correctly. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode. And then I hit L over the eye and select all the linked vertices for the eye. And then go into data properties, Let's scroll to the top of the vertex groups and then we select the different bones that we don't want uh, to be mapped anymore. So we hit remove on those bones for the neck and shoulders and everything like that. And when we're pretty sure that all of those bones that could have been affecting the eyes, we reassign them to the head. So select the head and, and click assign again. Now we should be good. If we go back into post mode, we can see that the eyes are now following the head 100%. And that's pretty much it. We've mapped this character good enough now for the low poly and uh, you can always tweak uh, to whatever level you need. But for my purpose, this is uh, pretty good. So let's keep it like this. 
All right, everyone, I hope that wasn't too fast or anything like that for you. Again, just pause, rewind, go back and forth. And I hope it gave you enough information about the keystrokes that I use, even though I didn't cover everyone in very detail. So you can look at my channel history for uh, some other videos as well. I've got some low poly modeling and some, uh, some tips and tricks about Blender modeling. So that contains uh, a lot more of the key presses and in detail. So make sure to have a look at those videos if you want any further information. In future videos, I'm gonna take this character and I'm gonna animate him. Let's create him uh, an idle and a running animation, for example. So if you uh, enjoyed this video, I hope uh, you give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to hit the like button. It... Yeah, the like button, is that the same as thumbs up? I think it is. Uh, but subscribe if you wanna watch another video as well and don't forget to hit that little bell as well if you definitely wanna see when it comes because uh, you never know, I might drop in another video in a few days or maybe next week, so. Take care everyone and I'll talk to you soon again and happy game development or uh, blender modeling or whatever it is that you do. And, uh, and Merry Christmas as well. We got Christmas around the corner. I hope you've got all your presents. If you've got uh, kids, good for you. And uh, if you don't, good for you as well. Uh, make sure everyone's happy for Christmas. I'm gonna be uh, really busy now wrapping all the presents for the kids and uh, yeah, visiting some family and friends and it's a nice time of year. So let's, uh, it's not gonna be a white Christmas this year. As long as we're happy, everyone, that should be good enough. So take care, and I'll talk to you soon again. Bye.